Good morning, folks. Uh, apologize for the background noise right away, living near a busy highway. So I just want to show you real quick um, where I am with uh, testing for my aquaponics, my scaled-up greenhouse system. So what I've got here is a uh, 20, oops, sun glare, is uh, what's that, 15-gallon barrel. Uh, that would be 60 liters. Um, and what I've done is I've got a uniseal on the bottom, 2-inch uh, or 50-mil uh, hole. And sitting on top of that is a reducer that goes um, from 75 mil down to, or three inch down to 50 mil or two inch. Underneath that, you can see is there's my uh, 50 mil pipe to another reducer, which goes from uh, 50 mil to uh, 30 mil, and then a piece of angled pipe which runs this way out to a little piece of pipe over here and this piece of pipe and I'll show you in a minute um, is slashed and popped with some holes just for air for aeration so and then of course you've got this black hunk of hose which runs up there's a pump in the bottom down there so I'm gonna plug this thing in and show you what it looks like so pump running water pouring in and I'm just gonna let this thing fill up to the point where um, you can see the water starting to spill over top That's our rooster, Denny. He's saying good morning. He hears me talking, so he's got to say something, too. Now the pump in question is an 800 liter per hour pump, um, it's about 200 gallons an hour. Um, that turns out to be way too small for a straight uh, 2 inch 50 mil pipe run the entire way through. Um, essentially the capacity of the pipe exceeds the capacity of the pump and so it won't actually ever siphon, it just drains too fast to actually air, uh, to remove all the air out of the pipe. So you'll see now as the water starting to spill over. Um, and you can hear it running, and you can see down here that uh, there's water coming out, but it's just kind of splashing. And you'll see that the pipe up here is keeping up with the water flow very well, and so it will run in this sort of state of equilibrium indefinitely. There's as much water going out as there is going in. And looking down the maw of the pipe, you can see there's plenty of air there. So what I'm going to do now is, you can see there's a brick in the water here. That's a, a skit, that's a little lift. It's about 15, 10, 15 mils, half inch. And uh, I'm just going to grab a uh, ordinary ketchup can. It's a, you know, almost three liter, and just sit it down over top. And immediately the whole noise changes. And this is what it looks like down here. That's the siphon running. What's actually happened, and you can see the water being pulled in. So what's just happened at this point is that because the water was getting channeled up forcefully, it actually pulled some of the air out of the can because of the water seal. And then because there was more water pouring in uh, into the void space, it started siphoning and drained the entire thing out until it started pulling air in around where the, the brick lifts the bottom up. And it's still actually draining very slowly. It takes another few seconds and then slowly it'll refill the whole thing up and the cycle process will start again. If you're wondering why it is I used a uh, Heinz ketchup can, it's because it's what I had handy and it's because it fits more than plenty big over top of the uh, the 75 millimeter reducer. Um, what I was trying to determine was if the width mattered um, that much and the answer is as long as water can move freely, um, the height of the can doesn't matter. Um, I was working with a uh, uh, Coke bottle, two liter Coke bottle, which fits way too snugly down. I mean, I modified it and cut some slashes into it and things like that, trying to allow water to move, but just not good enough. 
um, it just doesn't behave this way. So we'll watch this thing fill up again. And right about now the siphon should be starting. Yep, there we go. And you can see the water level dropping rapidly. And here's what it looks like down here. And you can see this injects an awful lot of air into the water, which is fantastic. Now this is just a simulator, it's a test unit. There's no fish in this. Um, this water would be draining straight into where the, the fish tank is. Um, and so, you know, a lot of high speed aeration and churn at the surface, which is good for the fish. And that's it, just that fast 15 gallons or, four, or uh, 60 liters worth of water dumped. And you can see now that uh, the water level is starting to come back up, and uh, everything's running just fine. So it uh, runs pretty quickly, actually. Um, so I don't know if I'm sticking with the uh, with the can, or if at least, or as a minimum, uh, what it does is tell me is that as long as I uh, the can is just bigger than the maw of the, uh, the the pipe, and I have the reducer on it, I'm okay. Uh, without the reducer, uh, the second reducer underneath. It won't run. It uh, doesn't actually siphon. Uh, the water drains too quickly. Never drowns the uh, the intake pipe the way it's supposed to. So um, I'm either going to have to uh, get a more powerful pump, um, probably 1,600 liters an hour, uh, which is actually roughly where I want to be for a thousand liter system, which is where I'm going. Um, or I will need to uh, use that second step reducer just to make sure that the the, the water speed picks up enough. Anyway, folks, um, just uh, wanted to give a quick update for the morning, uh, morning mad science experiment. All right. Howdy, folks. Just a quick update video. Um, this is, uh, it's got a clear glass jar dropped over top so you can actually see what the siphon process looks like. Now this jar is a whole lot wider than my uh, ketchup can. So uh, the interesting effect is, is that if I use the brick the same height, uh, it uh, goes into what's called equilibrium. Literally it runs the rate of water coming in and the rate of water going out wind up the same, even though the siphons run off. And there's Denny saying hello again. So you can see the water going up slowly. And there you go, starting to spill over. And now what's happening is it's actually starting to pull air out of the can, out of the, uh, the the bell. And you can see that jacks the water up, and there it floods out. And in just a few moments, it starts sucking air down the bottom. But then as it does that, it drops enough water back out the bottom of the barrel that, or the uh, the glass jar, that it uh, seals itself up. And so you can see now there's water's coming in, but the water level doesn't climb back up again. There's enough water that it's just filtering out. So I'm just going to uh, break the seal and let this thing start over, and I'm going to move the uh, jar up on top of that piece of brick right there. So there we go. I've got the... Uh, so that makes a much wider gap, about twice as high. Uh, almost three times as high, actually. And uh, so we're just going to let this thing fill up again, and you'll see what it looks like. The trick to the siphon is that where the air is getting airlocked by the water, essentially water seal down the bottom, as water starts to flow out, it drags the air with it. And as air leaves, water rises in the, in the glass to fill the void, and that's what actually starts the, the runaway process that empties the thing out. Get a sun glare there and change the angle. And there we go. And just like that, it's run out. And you'll see it immediately starts to refill as the water pouring in the bucket into the barrel from the uh, other side here. 
So as I said, uh, it's about an 800 liter per hour pump. starting to pour in and there goes the siphon stacking up the water and here's what it looks like down here all right folks thanks for watching signing off